having a good tool for security and vulnerability scans is very important. Will Black Duck pass the test or will it be a black ship? Hello everyone and welcome back to Carter Day. Thank you very much for joining me. Today we are going to take a look at Black Duck, one of the most popular open source and vulnerability scan products in the market. Before we start, I just want to point out that neither Black Duck nor the acquiring company are sponsor of this video. They just let me have a short period trial license, so I want to thank them for that. Okay, let's start. First of all, you obviously need to have access to a Black Duck instance. In my case, you can see here I'm using the SaaS version, but of course you can also use the on-prem self-managed one. Then you need to install the Azure DevOps extension. Um, this can be a little misleading because if you search for Black Duck in the marketplace, you will see that the extension is actually unpublished, as you can notice here. The reason for this is that Black Duck has been recently acquired by Synopsys, and so they have consolidated all their extensions in one, called Synopsys Detect, which is available here which now can be used for managing Black Duck and other Synopsys tools. You can install this extension using the button here that will add it to your Azure DevOps. This extension uses a service connection in Azure DevOps for connecting with the Black Duck service, so that needs to be configured. If you go to the project setting in your team project, and then you go to service connection, and you click the new service connection, you will see that you have two more options here. Just select the black duck and enter the required settings in here. You will need to provide the endpoint of the service and your API token, which you can generate in black duck portal, or you can use the basic authentication, but that's not really recommended. Okay, let's go to the pipelines and see how this works. I've already created a simplified CI definition so we can focus on the tool. And I've already added the task to my definition. Oh, and I'm using the YAML definition, but of course, this would work also for the classic ones. If you go down here, we have our task. Let's take a look at these settings. As you can see on the right, the configuration is, is very simple. You need to select which product you want to use. In my case, it's only Black Duck. And then select the service connection for the Black Duck instance. Uh, you can also specify some custom arguments. One thing I don't like here is that there isn't a text box for specifying the name of the project. You need instead to use the argument box and same thing for the version. If you don't specify those arguments, as I did the first time I ran this scan, it automatically creates a new project on your Black Duck instance, having the name of the folder where the command runs, which for Azure Pipelines is just S. So that's not a great move. You will have the link to the documentation for this in the video description. For the sake of time, I've already executed this pipeline. So let's go to the results. As you can see, the whole scan took about three minutes to complete, which is not bad at all. If we dig deeper into the log, there's two things worth mentioning. First, the tool automatically tried to execute some of its components for the different platform. For example, here we have the Docker scan and the Bazel one. This application is just a plain ASP.NET web application, so both are actually skipped because there's nothing to do for them. But this is actually cool if you think about it. The second thing I want to mention is in the end. If you see here, the overall status and all the operations are reported as success. There is no mention though of any vulnerability or other issues that may have been detected. So what does success actually mean? Let's take a look at the Black Duck portal to see if we can get more clues. This is the Black Duck dashboard. As you can see here, I have the nice S project. 
and I also have the one with the actual name. If we take a closer look, it seems we have some issues here. So why did the task in the pipeline reported everything as success? I started thinking it's just saying that the scan itself completed, but it doesn't take in consideration the actual scan results. Let's dig deeper. Okay, so it separates the scans into different versions, nice. In my case, I executed the pipeline twice, and these should be the two, the two ones produced. Oh wow, it appears we have some serious problem here. So yes, my guess was probably correct. The success reported in the pipeline was just saying that the scan uh, had completed, but was not referring to the actual health of my application. Let's see what we have here. Uh, apparently we have like a couple of security risks, some license risks and some operational risks. Everything is quite clear, quite nice. You have all the components on the left, where it has been used, what kind of license problem, for example, you have like in here, it's a AGPL 3.0. So if I click there, I have all the information on why the tool thinks this is not, not a good license for me. I can go here and see, for example, that operational risk with this component is that this version was released 1,145 days ago. So it's just telling me this component is not updated. Uh, let's scroll down and let's see about the security risks. So what is this? In this case is Bootstrap. And OK, it informs me that there are some security issues. And it's cool because I also have the bulleting number here about the security vulnerability. So this gives me a lot of information. I can filter the dashboard by severity. In this case, I'm seeing all the high risk operational problems. I can actually combine filters to uh, show only the things I care about. I have a view for just the security risks and it also provide some kind of update guidance for me to try and follow. Another useful thing is that you can create your own reports. You can go here, create report and decide what you actually want to be included in your report. This is pretty cool. It takes a few minutes to generate one. So I already created one. And if we go and download that, we see that is a zip file and it contains basically the CSV files with all the vulnerabilities and the results of your scan. Last thing I want to mention and that I find uh, quite cool is that you can actually see the report for each component, even in other projects. So far, all the information we've seen were related to the single project we are working on. But what if you want to see if a specific component or library you're using is actually affecting other projects? That is very easy. You just click on one of the components here and you'll see here that not only we have it in the current project, but if you have ever scanned any other project, you'll see here as well. So this is pretty handy. I like this. I think this tool is quite nice. It gives you a lot of information about security issues and vulnerabilities you have in the components you use in your application. As I mentioned before, the only thing I don't actually like is that there is no out of the box way for the task to fail if it detects any high risk vulnerability. You can actually make the task fail using a custom policy like this one here. It is very important that you remember to specify a proper level of severity here and we will see why in a second. After creating the policy, you need to add another argument in the task to actually validate that policy. You can see it down here. And you can see here that this is the severity that we specified in our policy. This is why I said it's important to set a proper severity level in the policy because you want to validate on your task just the one you care about. 
Remember, this is to make the task fail if it encounters some vulnerabilities and you don't want to make your CI fail every time for no reason. This is okay, I guess, but in my opinion, they should enable it by default. It is the, the whole point of switching left on security and vulnerabilities, right? So, what do you think? Do you use and like Black Duck? Let me know if you have any feedback using the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. See you soon at Quarter Dave.